Hi, I'm a possum and I find garbage. Today's garbage is Moana 2, the sequel to Moana, an animated movie from Disney loosely based on Polynesian myths and folklore. I promise I won't tell your kids how Maui dies in Maori mythology because it's too funny and white women on Twitter will get mad at me. Anyway, Moana is one of the most financially successful animated films of all time, so you've probably seen it and I don't need to waste time harping on it and I was pretending it was some kind of revolutionary work of genius so it was a serviceable distraction for kids at best. Basically, a girl on some island teams up with a demigod to retrieve his magic hook thing from a giant homosexual crab, and then they return a magic jewel to a, a lava ma monster who turns back into a grass goddess. There, there are some songs in it, and they have a run with some coconut people at one point. That's all the important stuff. Moana 2 was originally planned as a series for Disney Plus before it was retooled at the last minute into a movie. Why do they do that? It had something to do with the 2023 writer's strike, I don't know. But it's probably why the movie has so many unnecessary characters and why the plot feels like ideas for non-serialized episodes which weren't fully realized but which got hastily stitched together. Like this one part where they get captured by the Kakamoras and are tasked with poisoning a giant clam because it's keeping them from going back to their home island somehow. I don't know why they can't just like go around it. But after Moana and the gang get swallowed by it, that whole subplot just kind of disappears. There's this one character who's set up to be a villain, but it turns out she's not evil. But then she just kind of disappears from the movie at the halfway point and doesn't show up again until the mid credits sequence. And then there's this cranky old man character who Moana forces to go with her on her quest to the other side of the ocean because they need a farmer who can grow food on their long journey, which makes no sense. Is he supposed to grow enough crops in this tiny little space on his boat to feed four or five people and just grow back all those plants overnight? I know coastal liberals who write these movies have no idea how food is made, but even the most out of touch Hollywood pervert should be able to assume it takes more than four square feet of soil to feed even one person for a day. And he doesn't even do anything. His, his character arc is that he becomes slightly less cranky by the end of the movie. There's this one woman who's supposed to be the smart one because she's like the engineer who designed the boat. And she keeps tinkering with it while they're using it, cutting ropes and talking fast in a British accent for some reason. And there's this, the big guy who, aside from being muscular, has no masculine traits at all and is just as useless as the old man. It's like Moana picks the least qualified people to accompany her on this important quest. I know you need to have your comedy antics in your animated kids movie, but there are ways that this could have been written so that Moana got stuck with this ragtag team of idiots instead of consciously choosing them and being an idiot herself. And normally, in a movie like this where a bunch of characters with clashing personalities are forced into a situation together, they'll learn to put aside their differences and work with each other, but in this movie, they don't even really clash with each other. There's no conflict or drama between them or anything. This seems like a small thing, but it's one of those things in a story that your brain takes for granted because it's just so standard. Interpersonal conflict is a good way to flesh out a story and explore themes by showing how different characters respond to the same situation. So when it's absent and there isn't anything to take its place, the story feels hollow. And I think this might be why the movie just kind of washed over me and left no impression. There's so little going on between these characters, uh, there's actually a scene where they wreck the boat on an island, then Moana walks away for a while and comes back and finds they already fixed it off camera. In any other movie, this is where the characters would be forced to use teamwork to get themselves out of trouble, but this movie just skips over that and gives us nothing instead. Uh, th this movie fails at basic storytelling logic. If they weren't going to do anything with these characters, they should have just left them out of the movie. Moana has a little sister in this movie whom she calls Little Sis, and the little sister calls Moana Big Sis. You know, like how no one in the history of the world has ever talked. But th they do that in this movie because they think we're stupid and wouldn't understand that they're sisters if they didn't refer to each other as such, literally right as the little sister character is introduced. This character isn't even in most of the movie, is entirely pointless outside of the fact that Moana has to exposit things to her, so it'll be explained to the people in the audience who didn't see the first movie. 
I was expecting maybe she would get captured by whatever bad guys at some point and Moana would have to rescue her, because that just seems like the most cliched reason to introduce a child's character, but they didn't do that, thankfully. Instead, they did nothing with her, which is arguably worse. So it's like she only exists for Moana to dump exposition on her and nothing else. That and cutesy little kid stuff, because Disney assumes kids want to see kids in a movie. Even Moana herself barely has any character development. That's because she already had her arc in the first movie by learning to overcome her self-doubt, and sequels to self-contained movies tend to go one of two ways. Either reset the main character and do the same thing again, or shift the focus to another character and develop them instead. So I guess that's why they brought in all these half-baked sidekicks. But they barely get any development either, so we got the worst of both worlds. And that's probably a consequence of Disney retooling the story outlines from a bunch of self-contained episodes of an aborted TV show into a feature film. The sidekick characters simply weren't meant for this format. They were meant to be developed over the course of a TV show, and this movie didn't allow enough time for them. So they're all given exactly one personality trait and no depth. You know what else lacks depth? The songs. I've only seen the first movie twice, and I can remember the melodies of at least a few songs. But I just saw Moana too, and I can't remember a single one. Including the one that Moana sings two or three times. It's like Wish. There are no catchy melodies. Apparently, the guy who wrote the songs for the first movie didn't come back for this one, and I guess whoever replaced him thought it would be a good idea to have some of the characters do this fast-talking rap thing. It's cringy. They should have just put a rapping dog in the movie. Let's talk about the animation. So, because this movie was originally planned to be a cheap Disney Plus show, they outsourced the animation to some studio in Vancouver instead of animating it in-house like they did with the first one. But because they decided to turn it into a movie partway through production, and the animation now had to meet the standards of a $150 million theatrical movie, all of those poor animators had to redo a ton of work for a project that was now materially different from what they signed up for. So, I'm sure they had to work long, stressful hours to meet tight deadlines. And if this movie ends up making a ton of money, that means Disney will be encouraged to keep abusing the underpaid animators of Ford Studios. So that's what you're paying for. As for the quality of the animation, it's fine. It's not any better than the previous movie, which had some pretty impressive CGI water. It's also not any worse, at least not in any way that I noticed. It's technically impressive, but it doesn't look like anything has improved since the first movie came out eight years ago. And it's still the same trite art style Disney has been using since Tangled, which came out 14 years ago. You know, considering the fact that modern computer animation makes it possible to copy-paste things, and they already had tons of assets they could reuse from the first movie, and they didn't develop any new technologies for this one as far as I know, it makes you wonder how this movie ended up costing $150 million to make. I wonder how much of that went to paying Dwayne Johnson to stand in a recording booth for a couple hours. As a general rule, when you factor in things like marketing costs and theater take, a movie has to make at least double whatever the production budget was before it could turn a profit. And that's a conservative estimate. It's really probably closer to three times. But as of the time I'm writing this, Moana 2 has turned a profit over its opening weekend. But what remains to be seen is if it will exceed the first movie, or if anyone who was going to go see it in a theater already has, and the rest will just wait to watch it basically for free on Disney+. Plus. All right, I can't think of much else to say about Moana 2. Here's a challenge for my audience. In the comments below, tell me what upcoming Disney movies you're not looking forward to. And like this video, leave a comment for the algorithm, send me your fan art, and support me on Patreon. The link's are in the pinned comment. Bye.